and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith and Victory Church. Glad to have you and excited to be with you tonight. And we're going to just jump right in here and um, go through these, these uh, different things we're covering. We are talking about and ministering on healings in the ministry of Jesus. Uh, as we said last week, there are, between the four Gospels, 31 recorded healings uh, in those Gospels of which 19 are different. In other words, there's, there are repetitive uh, recordings of events in the Synoptic Gospels. Sometimes John and one other apostle uh, covered an event. But we have, So we have 19 distinctive um, healings. Of the 19, 12 credit the faith of the individual for why they got healed. Nine, I mean seven co uh, credit, really don't credit anything. You know, it's, it's working of miracles, it was gifts of healings. Um, it was sovereign, you know, some, something like that. But 12 were just directly state or imply it was the faith of the individual is why they were healed. Praise the Lord. Which puts it at 62, 63%, something like that, of the healings that took place in the ministry of Jesus were credited to the faith of the individual. And uh, so, you know, some people think, well, just because Jesus is here, people are going to get healed. Well, remember, when they went to Simon Peter's mother-in-law's and they couldn't get in the house, the, the man taking one of Paul's on the stretcher, <clears throat> the power of the Lord, the Bible says the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And that was the do doctors, lawyers, Pharisees from every town around about Jerusalem and Judea. Um, but none of them got healed. So we do know that just because Jesus was there, the healing power was there, does not mean somebody's going to be healed. Um, and he wouldn't bring his healing power if it wasn't his will to heal. So <clears throat> we'll pick up from there. Let's go on. We, we covered an, an, uh, eight last week. I think we just kind of just read the, the man born uh, dumb and blind, which doesn't state anything. So we... Um, they brought him one that was possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him. Inasmuch as the blind and dumb both spake and saw. That was Matthew 12, 22. That's where we left off last week. We don't credit that one as, a, as the faith of the individual because it doesn't say it does. And uh, so we're going you know, to move on from there to the daughter of Jairus. <clears throat> now, this is covered in Matthew 9, Luke 8. Hallelujah. So Matthew 9, Mark 5, and Luke 8. We're going to read from Mark's gospel. <clears throat> and um, when Jesus had passed over again uh, by ship to the other side, much people gathered unto him. That's Matthew 5, 21. I'm sorry. Matthew 5, chapter 21. Um, uh, the other side, uh, he was not, um, the people gathered because he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And besought him greatly, saying, My daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. <clears throat> While he yet spake, there came the, um, from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain men which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? And, uh, and what we did is we jumped from 23 to 35, because we skipped the woman with the issue of blood. That takes place right smack dab in the middle of this, okay? Um, and we will get to that, all righty? And so, um, thy daughter is dead. Why trouble us the master any further? And as soon as he heard the word that was spoken, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith to the synagogue, a ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. He had to stop his mouth before he said something of unbelief that would set, uh, would, would, um, solidify the fact that his daughter was dead. And he allowed or suffered no man to follow him, save or accept Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And they cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and see the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. Now, that you've got to understand, in this era, and we still see it in um, uh, Middle Eastern countries today, um, professional wailers or mourners. You know, uh, someone dies, they come and they go, oh, oh, and they just make a big noise. So much so, the Bible called it the tumult. And um, you can tell from what happens here, they weren't really serious about what they were doing. <clears throat> and um, he said, why make you this ado and weep? The damsel's not dead, but sleeping. And they, and they went from, oh, to laughing him in scorn. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, wow, you got to get rid of unbelief and negativity for faith to work. Hallelujah. 
He's talked to the, he talked, talketh to the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered into where the damsel was lying. He took her by the hand and said unto her, Talitha, kumi, which is uh, being interpreted damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of age of 12 years old. And when they were astonished with great astonishment, and he charged them that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Now we have here, we don't have a um, inference that faith raised her up. Okay, so we were, we we're going to put this over into the, you know, a sovereign miracle, working of miracles, gifts of healings of Jesus, a category of one of the seven. Hallelujah. Um, he, he did tell the synagogue, the guy in the synagogue, uh, Jairus, he said, don't be afraid, disbelieve. So he, he was encouraging, you know, speaking about his faith being involved. But we don't have a straight declaration of that, of that, of that fact. <clears throat> so. Which brings us to the woman with the issue of blood. Let's just jump right in there. Um, right here in the middle of the same chapter, Matthew 5. Let's go back up to verse 24. And when Jesus went with him, remember, uh, much people followed him and thronged him. Now, you all know what a throng is. That's a bunch of people. You're getting knocked around and all this. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood, 12 years, had suffered many things of many physicians and spent all that she had was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, let me say this, the, the issue of blood was considered a communicable disease and they were prohibited from coming in contact with other people. As a matter of fact, to go into public, they were to uh, guard themselves in a way that people recognize it, and they were to say out loud, somebody got too close to them, unclean, unclean, and, and so that people would not get too close to them. Kind of like social distancing today, you know? You got to walk around, but, and of course, everybody's considered it unclean. But they had to stay away from somebody that, that was uh, notably, or no, no, they knew that they were um, with a communicable disease. And... Um, but when she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. Now, when she got in contact with people, she was um, eligible <laughs> to be stoned. She could have been stoned for that. And had the Jews known who it was, they probably would have. They were expert stoners. You know, it, it, it elevated them because they stoned somebody who broke the law. And, you know, made them feel better about themselves because you could, ah, I'm not like them. We stoned them because they were so bad. And um, <clears throat> in that joy unspeakable and full of glory. Aren't you glad we don't stone people who come into church today? Some do with the words. So that, that's another thing. Hallelujah. She came in the press behind him and touched his clothes. For she said, and the, the Greek bears out uh, in the tenses of the verbs, she said and kept on saying, if I can touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. So the Bible says she heard of Jesus, and she started to say, if I can touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. If I can touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. If I can touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. If I can touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. If I can touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. If I can touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And just kept saying it. And kept on saying it. And kept on relaying it. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and straightway. The fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue, in this case, the word virtue is translated from the word dunamis, miracle power, uh, had gone out of him, turned about in the press, and said, who touched my clothes? He didn't say, he didn't even touch Jesus, just touched his clothes. Are y'all here? Just touched his clothes. And the disciples said unto him, the spiritual bunch, don't you like it when you're surrounded by spiritual people? Hallelujah. Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, who touched me? They're like, Jesus, look, Master, I, I know you haven't been getting enough sleep, hadn't been getting enough food, you've been fasting a bunch. Um, you're out here, all these people out here, but just so you understand, everybody's touching you. And I, I can imagine Jesus just ignoring them. <laughs> and he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. He didn't even acknowledge their stupidity. 
and their carnalness. He just kept looking. And the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth, which was dangerous because she was out in public, considered unclean. And he said unto her, I am the son of God. I came down from heaven and healed you to prove I am the son of God. Isn't that what it says in verse 34? Huh? Nope. It says, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Her faith got up out of that bed. She was nothing better, but rather grew worse. She was anemic because she had this constant flow of blood. She went out. She didn't cry out unclean. All she could say was, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. And she went into the crowd, got there, and there's a crowd around her. She can't even get to him. But she goes into the press and touches his garments. Because she kept saying, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. And when she touched him, uh, but David Ingalls had a song. Uh, he touched her. When she touched him, hallelujah, when she touched him with faith, the power of God came into her and made her whole of her plague. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and Jesus, now I'm guessing if anybody knows what healed her, come on now, it, forget the theologians, forget the PhDs, forget the, the DDs, forget the D whatevers, you know, doctors of ministry, doctors of divinity, uh, Doctors of philosophy, uh, the cemetery, I mean the seminary graduates, all that stuff. And let's listen to the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. His commentary is not virtue was built up in me and virtue flowed out and healed people and healed this woman today. His commentary was thy faith hath made thee whole. Thy faith hath made thee whole. That's what Jesus said. Now, you can mock healing ministries and healing preachers and people who lay hands on the sick or whatever, but the bottom line is, or, or, you know, or faith, you know, people who say, I was healed by faith, you can do all that you want to, but Jesus said her faith healed her. If her faith healed her, your faith will heal you. God is not a respecter of persons. Hallelujah. Amen. He, he is... He is the one he's, God's given to every man the measure of faith. Hallelujah. Okay, so the woman with the issue of blood that takes place in the middle of the story of Jairus' daughter was healed because of her faith. Glory to God. Let's go to Matthew chapter 9 now. This is the only place this is recorded. Uh, the two blind men and the dumb demoniac. Whew, that's almost like speaking in tongues. <laughs> Demoniac, glory to God. Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 through 34. When Jesus departed thence, two blind man, men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came into him. And Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye. Listen, here you go. He didn't just reach out there and get him and heal them with power because he's the son of God. Believe ye that I'm able to do this. And they said unto him, Yes, Lord. He then touched he their eyes and saying, listen to this, according to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were open and Jesus straightly charged them saying that, they sh that no man should know it. But they went out and departed and spread abroad his fame in all the country. And they went out and behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake and the multitudes marvel saying, it's never so, it's, it was never so seen in Israel. But the Pharisees, he casted out devils through the prince of devils, and that's just like a bunch of politicians today. They, the other that judges another, doest thou the same. Oh, my. We could, get, we could go down a road right there. We're not going to, though. You know? And, um, yeah, Jesus is healing the sick. And we get that in the church today. People, people are ministering. People are getting healed. People are getting delivered. And then those who have nothing going on, except, you know, graveyard services and no power and no love and no, no anointing and no nothing. Just, you know, hang on until you get to the end. You might make it through somehow, some way, you know. Or they've tested, I've been in the way for 40 years. That's the problem. Get out of the way so somebody can go on. But they start accusing people of, of doing stuff by the power of the devil. Now, I understand that there's false and lying signs and wonders, but they're not to the magnitude of glorifying God. 
They will, they will magnify and glorify a man or a, a man cause or a man event and not God. <coughs> but notice that when Jesus prayed for them, laid hands on them, he said, according to your faith. He didn't say according to the power I've got. Now, we know from Scripture that the Bible says that the Spirit was given unto, was given unto Jesus without measure. There was no limit to his access to all that the Father possessed and all that the Father had. Glory to God. There was no limitation. There was no restriction on it. He had the Spirit without measure. But he didn't say according to how much power I have in me. He said according to your faith be it unto you. Hallelujah. And their eyes were open and they saw. Glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? I said, isn't that wonderful? Give me a couple of, of hallelujah, amen type things out there on the, on the line. You know, little clappy hands or little hearts that show, you know, you love pastor, you love what he's saying. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, the 12th. So this one goes in the category, obviously, of the healing by faith. Um, we have from Matthew 15, Mark 7. Um, <coughs> <coughs> praise the Lord. We're going to read from Matthew's gospel, chapter 15. And the Syrophoenician woman's daughter. Now, Syrophoenician was not a Jew. Okay? So, in, in relation here and in context here, she does not have a covenant right. Just like the centurion, the Roman centurion, does not have a covenant right to access the things of God. Okay? And Jesus went thence, in verse 21 of Matthew 15, into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Now, have you ever had somebody aggravate you over something? Hello? Nothing. I mean, just simply aggravate you constantly. Hello? Yeah, I, I could tell my frying pan story on my wife, but I'm not going to do it. Ah, I'm going to do it. She's on the other side of the camera. She can't defend herself. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she can throw something at me. We were early married, our first few months, and uh, she came home from work, and I had, I had lost my job. I wasn't even employed. I just kind of laid around all day and, uh, you know, prayed. I was being spiritual. And, uh, you know, the man of God, you know, I'm going to believe God for the money. Anyway, yeah, she goes out and works and goes to school. Hallelujah. She's going to school full time and working. Um, and she came in one night, and I said, honey, what's for dinner? And she, you know, she would come in and she was tired. She would drop her purse. You'd hear it hit the wood floor, clunk. And she went and laid on the bed. She was trying to recover from the day. And um, I'm in there. I was washing dishes. I'd be, I, was, I was being the good husband. I'm in there washing dishes. And um, I even had the frying pan on the stove ready for her to come cook. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm really stretching it out here, man. I'm, I'm doing it. And, uh, and honey, when are you going to come cook? I'll come in a minute. And I keep saying it and keep saying it until I finally heard the Cherokee come out. And those feet hit the floor and she pounded through the house and she came in the kitchen and grabbed that frying pan and said, you want something to eat? I'll give you something to eat. And I turned my back to her and started laughing because it was, I mean, <laughs> under my breath because it was hilarious. You, if you'd seen it, you would have laughed too. Hallelujah. And, uh, and then she tried to kick me. She ended up in the floor. Hallelujah. And so much so, we tell that story in the church, and the pastor's wife went out and bought a little cast iron frying pan keychain for her. Hallelujah. And so, do you still have that? Oh, well, you need to get a new one. Hallelujah. But I aggravated her. I kept pestering her and kept going, and I kept going. And the disciples are tired of hearing this woman cry after them. My daughter is grievously vexed of the devil. Please come. Please do something. Please. And Jesus isn't doing anything. He's not even answering them. And um, finally, he just turns and goes. But he answered and said, I am not sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then, she, okay, I got my opening now. He talked to me. 
she runs in and goes, um, worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, this is not what she's probably waiting for. It's not meat to take the children's bread, what? The covenant blessings and give it or cast it to dogs. Now, some people, I'm going to tell you something. 99% of the people in the world today would have never would have missed out on getting what, get what she got. Because they would have got offended. That preacher talked mean to me. That preacher, I can't believe he said what he said. I'm going, to, I'm going on Facebook and I'm going to destroy his ministry. I'm, I'm going to tell everybody what he said. That's exactly what would have happened today. And she said, truth, Lord. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Now, <laughs> what she said was, I don't need the whole piece of bread. I just need a crumb. Glory to God. And why? Because she didn't have a covenant right to it. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Now, here's the thing. Jesus knew, because he told her, it's not right to take the covenant blessings and give it to the dogs. Now, the word dog there in the Greek was, an effect, was more of an affectionate house pet term, but it's still a dog. In other words, you don't, you don't have right to it. You don't have access to it through the covenant. Hello? And she's like, that's fine. Just give me a crumb. Let the crumb fall from the table. That's all I need. Glory to God. And he said, okay, according to your faith. He had to get her to access it differently than just based on the covenant that she had a right to. She didn't have it. And when he located her, he was able to point her in the right direction, and she got what she came for. And she would have gone on Twitter and Facebook and said, my daughter's been healed through faith in the power of God. And it don't take a whole lot. You just need a crumb. I can hear Lois Toucher saying that right now. You just need a crumb. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Amen. That's all you need. Yep. Hallelujah. That woman just needed a crumb. And Jesus, like, he's looking around going, Man, you've got great faith. You want it? You get it by your faith. Okay, her daughter was healed. So what do we know? The daughter of the Syrophoenician woman was healed because of the woman's faith. Because of her faith. Praise God. The deaf and dumb, blind, the deaf and blind, the deaf and dumb man. That talks about a lot of people in society today, doesn't it? They're deaf to spiritual things and blind to the things of God. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that right there. Matthew 15 and, and Mark 7. Hallelujah. Um, let's, let's read Mark's account, 31, chapter 7, verse 31 through 37. And again, he departed from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, and he came unto the Sea of Galilee, and through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they, brought, they bring unto him one deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseeched him that he put his hands upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude, put his fingers in his ears, and he spit and touched his tongue. Now, what is this? <laughs> this will mess up your day. Folks, you're going to have to be willing to just go and get it, what you need from God. <clears throat> just like Naaman in the Old Testament. Remember? Remember? He, didn't, he was told to go dip in the Jordan River seven times. And he's like, there's other places besides the Jordan to dip in that are cleaner. The Jordan's dirty. But the prophet said, you go dip seven times, you'll come clean. And his servant talked to him into doing it. He went in on the seventh time. He got cleaned. He was cleansed of his leprosy. Hallelujah. God didn't always ask you to do it the way you think it ought to be done. Well, here's another. Um, this can be working in miracles and gifts of healings in combination here. Um, he, he, so he, he sticks his fingers in his ears, spits in, on his tongue. Isn't that just lovely? And looking up into heaven, he sighed and said unto him, um, Ephatha, that is, be opened. Now, Jesus 
also did speak um, Aramaic. So we get a lot of things he says are, are, you know, some of these phrases sometimes are Aramaic and didn't translate, you know, like Greek to English. Um, they were, they were a, another language. That is, oh, be open. And straightway his ears were open, and the string of his tongue was loose, and he spoke plain. And he charged them that no man should tell it, but the more he charged him, so much more, a great deal, they published it. And, the, um, <clears throat> and were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. And so here, this one doesn't say anything about his faith. So this one goes into the category of gifts of healings, working miracles, um, you know, um, special faith. You know, the gift of special faith, not, you know, the person's faith or um, um, a sovereign demonstration of God. We go to John 9, and we're not going to read this whole thing, okay? It's the whole chapter, the, the entire chapter of God, John chapter 9. Um, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was born blind from his birth. And the disciples asked him, saying, who did sin, this man or his parents? Um, that he was born blind. And Jesus answered, neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but um, that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Now, the word here, um, but, is A-L-L-A -L -L -A in the Greek, and it means but, yea, rather, nevertheless. Now, so... We've read this so often and interpreted it. You know, the man didn't sin, his parents didn't sin, but God made him that way so I could work the works. That's not what he's saying. It says here, nevertheless, that the works should be made manifest to him, I must work the works. Remember, there's no punctuation in the Greek. They had to kind of stick it in there um, based on how they were, in, you know, built, uh, translating it. So, I must work the works of him that sent me, which is to what? To heal. While it is day, the night cometh, and no man can work. All right? This isn't saying God made him sick so he could come out here and heal him. Nevertheless, the works of God shall be manifest in him. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle, anointed his eyes of the blind with clay, and he said with him, or unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. Uh, which is by interpretation sent, and he went his way therefore and washed and came seeing, and um, and then they go on and you know, they have arguments with him about the fact that he he was um, um, they argue with him etc and so forth, but the bottom line is he here's another working of miracles or gifts of healings he spits on the ground makes clay out of spit now listen you don't want spit in your eye and you probably don't want grit dirt mud in your eyes. But that's what Jesus did, and he went and washed it and came again seeing. Hallelujah. Again, this does not go into the category of faith. It goes into the category of, of sovereignty, miracles, gifts of the Spirit. Luke chapter 13, the crippled woman. Hallelujah. Now, this comes here. Look at this. And when he, Luke 13, 10. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called him unto him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he, he laid hands on her, and, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogues answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. And said to the people, there are six days in which men ought to work. And then therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. Such, such piety. Such respect for the law of God. Such a demeanor to deny someone a blessing of God <coughs> to keep your rules. And the Lord then answered him, saying, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this daughter. Now, we get a lot out of this next statement. Being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound. 
lo, these 18 years. Now, what does he do? Jesus establishes the doctrine that the covenant people of God have a right to healing and that the oppressor of the body is Satan. Physical disease and, and, and uh, ailments are satanic oppression. No matter how you look at it, it's a virus, it's this, it is satanic oppression. But the covenant people of God have an absolute right to health and healing and deliverance from the work and hand of Satan. Ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years. Hallelujah. Be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. And when he said all these things, his adversaries were ashamed. And all the people rejoiced for the glorious thing that had been done by him. And then said he unto, the king, uh, unto them, um, unto what is the kingdom of God, and whereunto shall I resemble it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and cast into the ground, and it grew and waxed a great tree, and the fowls of the air lodged in it. And he said, Whereto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It has leaves, which a woman took and hid three measures of meal, and still the whole was leavened. Hallelujah. And so he says this woman had a covenant right to be healed. The man with drops we find in Luke again. Luke 14, 1 through 6, and it came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief uh, Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him which he had the dropsy, and Jesus answered, uh, answering spake to the, Pharise the lawyers and the Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace. They won't go set themselves, and they knew they were going to get set up. And he took them and healed them and let him go and answered them and answered them saying, which of you shall have an ass or an ox fall into a pit and will not straightway pull them out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him again to those things. So gifts of healings. The 10 lepers. Hallelujah. These are the last two we're going to cover and then we'll be done. Praise God. Luke 17, only found in Luke 17. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And he entered into a certain village, and there met him ten that were uh, lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up the voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Now, leprosy was a debilitating disease. Um, the, uh, the nerve endings would die, the flesh would begin to die, and, and literally body parts would kind of like, because of the condition, rot off. Nose, ears, fingers, extremity, starting your extremities. Um, it, it, would just, it would just keep going. And, uh, and, they were, and, and apparently it was, it was a, uh, I think they used that in one of the John Wayne movies, a ghastly sight. I think that, that's the term, a ghastly sight. And they were actually put in leper colonies, keep away from people, etc. Hallelujah. Um, and as they went their way, they were cleansed. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and was a Samaritan, <laughs> half Jew. He was, you know, he was, he was considered a half breed. He was considered an outcast. And Jesus answered and said, where, where are not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? And there, um, there are, are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. You know, he's outside, you know, he's outside the house of Israel. And he said unto him, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Not just healed, whole. What happened? Kind of like that country song. Got his nose back, got his ears back, got his four fingers back, hallelujah. Got everything back. He was made whole. But what did it? His faith. I said his faith. Oh, you like my, that, 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 that country song? Got his nose back, got his ears back, got his fingers and his toes back. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Yeah, I like that. Get restored. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So faith healed them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And let's look here. Matthew 20. Uh, this, is, this is recorded in Matthew 20. Um, let's read Mark 10. Let's read Mark's gospel. And then Luke 18. We'll read Matthews, verse 46 through 52. Matthew, I mean, Mark, 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 chapter 10, verse 46 through 52. This is the last of the healings. They came to Jericho, 
and went um, and, and came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, uh, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Tamaris, sat by the highway begging, side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. Oh, be quiet. But he cried the more great deal. I'm going to tell you something. It's easy to tell somebody else who has a need to shut up when you have the need and they don't. <clears throat> and when you're, you're looking at somebody who's crying out for help and telling them to be quiet because it doesn't affect you, you're wrong. Hello. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Telling him to shut up who had a need from God. He came, he's crying out for God to do something. You can't master. You can't bother the master. He's Jesus. You can't bother the master. He needs to be left alone. But he cried the great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the man saying, blind man saying, be of comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. <coughs> and he casting his, away his garment. Now what was that? That was his beggar's garment. Uh, they would uh, uh, give garments to beggars so that they would say, that, you know, this is recognized, this is, legit, this is a legitimate beggar, and they could beg and people could give to them uh, and know that it would actually give them to like a legitimate cause. Be kind of like if we came out with a beggar's garment for all the street people, say, okay, they've, they've registered, they're, they're legitimate, they're not just, they're not just uh, scamming you because they don't want to work, and they got a garment they're wearing. He cast it away. Wow. He ain't coming back to that. He's done with that. Are you here? Are you here? So casting away his garment rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus said unto him, What wilt that I should do unto thee? The blind man said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go your way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Hallelujah. And so this goes under the category of faith by the individual that he received his healing. Glory to God. Aren't you happy that you know, we, our faith can receive from God? <clears throat> Aren't you glad to know that our faith can get what God has for us? Aren't you glad to know that you're not left helpless, hopeless, and without? That God, through Jesus Christ, has made provision. And that we, through faith in him, can on purpose receive from heaven. Glory to God. Amen. I've been saying, saying since day one, I am a virus kill zone. The corona can't get on you. Amen. Because the plague doesn't come nigh my dwelling. It has to stop. It has to die. <coughs> it cannot function, flourish, and carry on. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to stay in faith with God that Jesus is our healer and has purchased healing for us. And our faith can receive from God. Glory be to God. Can I get an amen out there? Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. All right. Well, we're done. We finished those. Next week, we'll start on something different. Um, don't forget Sundays. We're talking about Christian character, and uh, we'll continue talking. I think we get into temperance and patience and stuff this week uh, on Sunday, so just be joining us for that on the Sunday morning service, 1230 on Sunday afternoons. That's the only time we can meet right now. Uh, we do our meeting in person. You can join us in person. Hallelujah. And uh, we would love to have you. Praise God. Amen. It's time to give. If you want to give you electronically through PayPal uh, or through Cash App, hallelujah, you can get that out. And we're going to pray, Father, in Jesus' name. We bless the people as they tithe and give. We thank you they're blessed abundantly. And heaven's windows are opened unto them in the mighty, majestic, and holy name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Praise God. We're so glad you could join us this week. Look forward to seeing you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. And until then, I want you to remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. And ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Walk in faith, live in victory, and watch the blessings of God come on your life in Jesus' name. Love you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online.